Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this, our worship at the First Congregational Church of Sutton. For a Sunday that's really a couple of different things on the calendar, we tend to look at it, as you can tell by the communion table, as Thanksgiving preparation Sunday, if you will. Sadly, this year, especially since we're not going to gather as the cluster of churches in the area for the ecumenical service, and respect for one another's safety. So, but it's also on the church calendar, and the reason why is celebration of Thanksgiving, it's also celebration of Christ the King Sunday. So if you hear elements of Christ the King slip into the lyrics of the hymns, um, Eric and I kind of conspired on that a little bit this week to make sure it's in there. So uh, keep that in the back of our minds as well. And of course, we welcome those who are going to be joining us later when I get done with my amateur editing of the video so that we can post it for folks to watch from comfort of home as well and, and this environment for comfort and safety. We do have several announcements this morning, one of which, I better make mine first or I'll forget it. The church council is going to meet off in the ether of the internet at 7.30 this evening. We'll have a Zoom meeting. So if you want to be a guest at the... Uh, Council meeting, uh, give the moderator Paul Schaefer a call or an email note during the course of the day, and we'll get you the link to the Zoom meeting. You can sign in as a guest. <clears throat> Sadly, uh, the church council has less working stuff to do in this environment, but we, we need to get together anyway. So there's an element of fellowship to that as well for those who, who serve the church. Oh, an announcement this morning? I want to thank everyone for their generous donations to the uh, fruit and vegetable collections that we did for the Senior Center. Tina Fenn and her son Nick took 800 pounds of fruits and vegetables to the Senior Center. They were very, very gracious and thankful. And also I'd like to thank Tina and Alice for decorating the front of the church and the windows. So thank you all so much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to let you know, although we're not having live Sunday school right now, the CE Christian Education Committee is alive and well. We meet monthly on Zoom. But we chose not to do a Zoom Sunday school at this time because uh, the consensus was that the kids are all Zoomed out as well as the parents. So uh, we do provide, Heather Dennis provides in the back of the church every week a lesson. It's got a little activity and Bible story in it that you can bring home. You can come in and grab a bunch of them. And she also emails them out each week to everyone on our email list. So if you're not on the list, if you're not receiving them, please uh, contact Marie and she'll put you on it. And the other thing I wanted to let you know that we are doing again this year is the Brighton Christmas, this year we call it Brighton Christmas 2020. And this is um, Sue Henderson and the town nurse uh, coordinated a list of uh, needy families and I will be outside the church, um, after church, I'll have a table outdoors where if you're interested, you could choose a tag. It's got the child's name, um, age, and some ideas of what they like. And you just put the tag, you buy a gift, put the tag on the gift, wrap it, and drop it off at the church. We're going to have a box, um, not sure where yet, but we will have a box in the church for when you return them. Now, um, I've already, I had 20 tags, we're already down, to, we only have 11 left now. Some people have heard about it and wanted to get in on it, so that's a good thing. But if we use all of them, um, you can donate gift cards, or if you don't want to shop and you don't want to risk getting it in time for the internet also, uh, from, from Amazon or something, um, you could just donate, you could donate money or you could donate um, gift cards. Uh, so the return date on this would be Sunday, December 13th, so that gives us three weeks. And if you have any questions, you can call Marie at the church, or you can call myself or Sue Henderson, and she can give you our numbers. And um, 
we hope that's successful. So that's it. Thank you very much. Linda? I thought you were yes. doing the retirement. Do you have anything for adults as well? Uh, this, this year, some of them, um, we only had a few for adults. There's two gift card requests in here, but the ones that we got were, were mainly children and um, clothing. Okay, but if you want to donate um, gift cards, um, you know, CVS, Walgreens, anything like that is always welcome. You, were you talking about Deb's retirement? We'll see, are you doing the gift card this year? I didn't hear you. Were you talking about Deb's retirement? Yes. Okay. Pardon me? Back here. Will CE be doing the gift cards this year? Uh, I don't think we are. We, we talked about it briefly, but um, I, if we do, we'll let you know. It, I think it's something we could put together quickly. So um, we just haven't all decided on that. Okay. And I just want to let you know also, as most of you know, Deb has, Deb Edgerton has retired. However, she is going to continue doing the communion and the um, confirmation. We are taking up a collection for her to give her a retirement gift, and that money needs to be in by November 29th. Okay, so um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements that we need to share while we're together? Uh, just a reminder that the box is still out in the front in the office, and that's for donations for the trees and greens uh, decorating the sanctuary uh, for the Christmas season. So just a, just a reminder if anyone would like to make a I'll echo that to get it on the microphone that there's a donation box still in the narthex for uh, offsetting the cost of decorations in the church at Christmas time. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to that again. Um, it's at a time when, again, in our if, if world were normal, we get up and greet one another and that happy babble of a few minutes that occurs in the congregational church when we gather. So if you'll look and, and throw a virtual babble at somebody, grin behind your mask, wave at somebody you haven't seen for a while, because somebody you haven't seen it all, wave extra hard, welcome them. Thank you. I know that feels silly, but doggone it, we got to do something. Now we invite you to stand as you are able to join us in the response to the call to worship, which this morning is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Know that the Lord is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. For the Lord is good. If you remain standing for the opening hymn, Come Ye Thankful People, Come, verses 1 and 4.
let us join in our prayer of invocation together. O God, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you richly bless us with all that we need, bread from the earth and the bread of heaven, which gives life to the world. Grant us one thing more, grateful hearts to sing your praise in this world and the world to come. talk particularly to the young folks a little bit, and I suspect others, at least in my generation, have heard this phrase before. When I asked for something, especially at the dinner table in my house, I was told I had to attach magic words to it, or it wouldn't happen. Anybody else experience that somewhere in their school or at home? Yeah, all the way. I hear a lot of, oh yeah. <laughs> and you know the words too, probably. Please, and thank you. I had the sad experience one year of having Thanksgiving dinner with another family when I was away from home. And I watched this family, hey, give me the potatoes. <laughs> Pass the gravy. Give me another drumstick. Uh, this is like an alien world to me, okay, at a dinner table. Don't, don't, don't you say Please and thank you to family. Oh no, they're family, we don't have to. <laughs> oh, of all the places to start from. <laughs> of all the people we should appreciate when we're at the dinner table, and well, let's face it, this week tends to center around the dinner table for, for this coming Thursday, and a lot of other things that we're doing too, but that tends to be the focus point. Now, can I share with you, young folks, one of my pet peeves? When I watch these so-called sitcoms or series on television, and they do their Thanksgiving special that week. And they have all the main characters sitting around the table, and instead of giving thanks, they all say, I'm thankful for. It doesn't sound too bad at first, does it? I'm thankful for the turkey, I'm thankful for the cranberry jelly, I'm thankful for the pie for dessert. I'm thankful for a safe home in which to eat it. I'm thankful, I'm thankful, I'm thankful. And all of those sentences start with what? I. Uh, I. Who's left now? God. To whom are we to be thankful? Yes, our families too. We say please, we say thank you. To families and others, it's just courteous. It's just courteous. If you please, and I give my thanks to you for doing whatever I ask. Nothing wrong. That. But when we're at the table and say, I am thankful, that's all about my feelings. And when we gather as a family, we make sure we say, I thank God for, or just thank God for, the turkey, the dressing. All right, a little bit of turn, if I have to. <laughs> but the squash and the potatoes. You know, we all have the things that aren't our favorites. Don't we? So remember to whom we are giving. Thanks. That's why it's called thanksgiving. And give thanks, don't just feel thankful. It's a pet peeve of mine, I guess, at the table. Right along with the please and thank you part. I'd like to share the pet peeve with you this morning so that you think about it when you say your prayers are around the Thanksgiving table. And any time we stop to pray, we say to God, please help and thank you for the blessings. Thanks for listening so much.
you, sir. Amen. Amen. Thank you. It's that time when we gather together our blessings to give thanks and our cares to live together to God in our prayers. I've got a minor, minor thanks and major thanks. Uh, Kathy is at home just about recovered from strep throat. Um, I'm thankful that she responded to the antibiotics because that means it was just the bacteria and not other things. Um, so she, she's mending, but she's home resting from the mending. Uh, I'm thankful for deacons who do two or three duties at once on a Sunday morning to help, help out when Kathy can't be behind the camera like she does much of the time. Um, and I said, minor thanks, I'm resistant apparently to strep. I did not catch it, thank God. Um, but of course there are others in school settings, community settings, family settings, who are wrestling with all kinds of ailments and illnesses. We all have, I do, and a couple of friends who are wrestling with stages of cancer. I know others do too. We give thanks where, where treatment and healing is available. One of my friends who's wrestling with serious cancer is not getting chemo. He's getting a T cell treatment. That's the cutting edge development of one's immune system. So even within difficult things. And somebody tell me again yesterday how much they appreciate the people getting together to be able to video and put our worship online. We have thanks for the technology to do that. Breathe aside that we have to, glad that we have it. Um, so uh, there's there's Thanks for recovery in our household. Um, are there other special thanks to give or, or special cares? Linda? I want to uh, thank God for helping uh, John O'Connor. He's my daughter-in-law's father, and he had leukemia and um, has received stem cell treatment uh, donation from his son, and he is 53 days out from that. He's home. He's doing very well. He has to isolate, obviously, but um, he should be cancer-free, So, but he needs our continued prayers. So for John O'Connor, treatment for leukemia that so far is looking, looking like it's having success, we'll pray that God continue to grant it through that. I know I, I've had some very good experiences when I was in hospital chaplain training. When doctors or nurses were receptive to joining me with a patient in prayer, to remember who gives the knowledge, the wisdom, the science, the truth, and who then is the ultimate healer. Other blessings or cares to share this morning. I know you'll be speaking in the hearts and minds during our prayer. There are those that we speak only to God, and we can be confident He hears them. You'll hear me during the message talk about thanks and giving, and others who find it harder to give thanks at this time of year than others for a variety of reasons. Keep those folks in prayer, too. I'll tell a story that years ago, I was passing through a small town, and just before I got to the town line, I saw the sign that said 50 miles an hour, and I started to accelerate. I saw the sign, went past it again. <laughs> We kind of find out that the, the officer stopped because I had DARE license plates, the anti drug and alcohol mm -hmm. program. He thought it was a cop. Uh, he says, aren't you going to show me your badge? <laughs> and we got one. What's with the license plates? An elder in my church is an officer. And I looked again, and he's just starting to chat. Like, Where are you going? I'm going to the church camp. It was Father's Day, Sunday. Taking my daughter to church camp because we were both on staff at the camp for that week. And I said, Chief, um, what are you doing on duty? Well, my officers have children. A minor room. So I took the duty for Father's Day so that none of the active dads in my department would have to do so. So we got a blessing before we left, and I got a little bit of an example. And the story has a purpose, of course, that there are going to be people on duty this coming weekend and during Christmas. They're going to be on duty on the roads as police officers. They're going to be riding the engines as firefighters. They're going to be in the ambulances, especially as EMTs. 
And I, I get the posts from a small town fire department, and I always say, you know, patient has fallen this age, this gender, needs a lift assist, negative to questions. They have to ask a separate set of questions. And the older firefighters, the chief and his captain, are the ones who go up, they say yes to the questions. They say, well, the PPE, you know, the younger guys stay with anyone. There are others who are serving far from home on holidays. And in the past, I've had the, the opportunity to, to serve them in the dining hall in a military setting, or to invite them to our quarters when young soldiers were far from home. Some folks are serving far from home and don't even have that kind of comfort. So please keep the folks who are, are on duty this week and in the coming season in your prayers to the God protect, guide and guard them, those that ride to our rescue, give them skill and safety. Because they'll be, they'll be working while we're feasting and celebrating and thanking. Let us join our hearts and minds then and come to the foot of God's mercy seat in prayer. Almighty and eternal creator of the heavens, and yet loving, merciful, gracious Father in our lives. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, wind and fire of the church that is the Holy Spirit, Lord, in all your ways, in all your persons, in all the ways you interact with us, we thank you. We give you our thanks, and it's it seems like paltry words compared to the, the blessings which you bestow upon us. Thank you for gathering us in peace and safety as this household of faith. And we remember the church throughout the world in all kinds of different settings, languages, dress and styles of worship, language for song, and especially we're lifting voices in your praise. You can only be done at risk. Grant your church courage and strength, commitment to faith, the assurance that you are Lord. We give you thanks for the ways that you give us to be parts of your healing touch for people. From T cell or stem cell or, or elaborate treatments to medicines to those recovering, to those still working and recovering, John, Bill, and Dick. Thanks for recovery for Kathy. Thanks for resistance that many of us here must have because we're not ill ourselves or we couldn't be here. All the way down, Lord, to the healing touch or healing phone call or a quick video chat that keeps us in touch with one another so that we can work to support each other with healthy minds and hearts this time and every time. <coughs> Keep folks safe. The travel is less but not none during the holiday season. At least keep folks wise and careful and safe as they gather. And using the different means that we have to gather, Lord, use this to strengthen ties of family that, and friendships that may be stretched in this time of pandemic. For all who will be on duty for the holidays, safety, strength, and wisdom, Lord, and our appreciation and thanks to you for providing them for, to them for answering your call to service of neighbors. We ask that our relationships at home, in church, in the community, in the commonwealth, and in the nation be guided by you, that we turn to you for example, for the words, for the caring for one another, that you would bring healing in all those different settings to the ways in which we have used the relationships 
which you have entrusted to us. We lift all our prayers, spoken or unspoken, in loving trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we pray together as he has taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, just like last week, I promised to mention our opportunity for giving very slowly. So that the bell choir can get an inflammation while I fill the dead space by talking about thanks and giving together. We have the opportunity to give to support through and in our church to one another, to the community around us. Clayton and Narthex, it's always the mailbox. And there's the giving link on the church website. As always, we ask that God bless the gifts, those who determine how they can best be used to help neighbors, and those who give them.
Please be seated. That was a German hymn, it wasn't. The <laughs> way. <laughs> The first scripture reading today is from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 through 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be filled up, lifted up. And you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions, and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you, to do you good in the end. Beware lest you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. The second reading is from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to them, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. That's the end of the readings. Thank you to God for his holy word. Deuteronomy is a pretty stark reminder as the people moved into a land that others had tilled, others had built, and the Lord had led them into by conquest to take it over. Fed them with manna on the way. And manna, by the way, comes from the Hebrew manhu, which just means what is it? When he said your fathers didn't know, even they didn't know whatever it was. He still said, what is it? And to this day, when you've heard a man, we're saying, what is it anyway? It's God's bread, obviously. Another part of Deuteronomy, I bring it up for a reason to talk about the leper. Another part of Deuteronomy, near this one, tells of what to do with the first fruits of the harvest. Beautiful table. I almost grabbed an apple on the way to the pulpit, but the deacon's advisor would be impolite to eat in front of you, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but with the first fruits of the harvest, to bring them to the priests and the Levites, the ones who did not have an allotment of land, because their land, their territory, was first the tabernacle and then later the temple. They were in God's service. So it was brought to, to feed the temple, to pay for the temple, to pay for the people who serve and help the people in serving God. And what it said was, not only did you bring the gift for God's temple or God's uh, tabernacle, you were to bring enough to that your sacrifice, when they sacrificed these animals, they didn't burn them all up. They boiled or roasted an awful lot of it too. It became a feast. 
It's how they fed the, the priests and the Levites. And it's how, too, a person who was making a great sacrifice would invite his friends and neighbors because it became a barbecue, a roast, a feed, a feast. Pick your, pick your dialect wherever you're from. It was a big deal. And they said, and invite, by the way, when you come with these first fruits of the harvest, bring your manservants and your maidservants. They had the equivalent of bond servants in Israel. And it was like, sadly, it's kind of like a slavery, but you work for someone for a certain number of years to work off a of debt. They were, they were not part of the family. There was household, whatever. Bring them. How about the alien, resident alien? It sounds awful. The sojourner is a nicer word. Bring the person who's in your land for a while, but is not of your people, not of your family, not of your clan. He's only in your village temporarily, traveling, business, whatever the reason. Bring them to make sure they're not left at home. And when you sit down to this big outdoor feed in front of the tabernacle, Seat them with your family and make sure they get the choices best. Feed neighbors with you that in giving thanks, you also give. That was a large part of their Thanksgiving, their harvest festival, and still is. It's still part of the commandment to go with that part of the year that a lot of gifts are given. Especially the charity gifts like 800 pounds, plus other giving that we don't see or talk as much about that occurs in and through the household of faith, the community of faith. And in Hebrew as well as in Greek, especially Hebrew, the word kahal means congregation, also means community. You can't separate the two concepts with the same word. So the Hebrew people were told very clearly don't pat yourself on the back when you're successful in the land the Lord has given you. I mentioned earlier who the real healer and giver of wisdom and healing is. Well, who's the real giver of prosperity? Of the meal we're going to enjoy Thursday. Of the opportunity to support those who don't come as easily by a meal on Thursday as we will. Who need the help doing it and the ability to help someone. Part of our giving thanks to God is giving to his other children. And has been since the first gifts at the tabernacle before the temple was even built. God said, this is how you give thanks. And remember, I'm the founder of the feast. Any other fans of Dickens here? I know you watched the movie Christmas, Christmas Carol. Bob Cratchit says, I give you the founder of the feast. Mrs. Cratchit says, Founder of the feast indeed. I'd like to give a piece of my hand to feast upon. <laughs> <laughs> well, poor Bob Cratchit made a minor error besides aggravating his dear wife on Christmas. The minor error was Scrooge wasn't the founder of the feast. God is the founder of every feast. I mentioned God as healer. I learned a little more about lepers reading for this lesson today, too. Remember when I spoke about healing a leper four weeks ago? I don't know, I lose track of Sundays after a while. And I mentioned that there were certain rules that lepers had to follow. They couldn't come near polite, healthy people. It, at a minimum, on a calm day, they had to stay four cubits from the nearest person. Anybody remember what four cubits is? Six feet. Six feet. Mm -hmm. Not familiar? Cubit is that distance, and four of those on an average builder is six feet. They have to wear a cloth covering the lower part of their faces. Sound familiar? <laughs> if it were a windy day, I've learned since, and a, a leper passed by upwind of polite, healthy people, the leper had to stay at least 50 yards upwind. Here's your gatherings of small people and trying to, try to commune in the distance. You ever try to converse with somebody 50 yards away? If you don't have a drill field or a coach's voice, you'll have trouble getting the message across. Well, that was the rules for lepers of that day. And of course, shouting out, I'm clean. 
If you were kind enough to leave a meal for a leper, you didn't ask for the plate back. You don't touch what the leper touched. Unless you, they didn't have alcohol cleansers with our hands, I guess. And maybe a little wine, but we don't want to waste it. So anyway, on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus passes along. He's, he's on the ragged edge of out of town, out of state. He's on the boundary between Samaria and Galilee. And if you want to feel like a foreigner, go get your nose tested before you can come home back from Pennsylvania. Come home to visit, visit back to live in Massachusetts after visiting Canada. A little bit of that foreign thing going on. Right? Anyway, ten lepers who stood at a distance, because if they didn't, somebody would get on about it, and lifted up their voices, Jesus, Master. Kurios means master, it also means Lord. So they're acknowledging something here. Jesus have mercy on us. And what does Jesus tell them to do? Be healed. Oddly enough, he says, do what the regulations and law of our people command us to do. Follow the rules. In that day, a priest, before he was fully ordained, I'm not sure what they called the, the ceremony, before he was fully trained, was trained, believe it or not, to exam examine certain types of symptoms, especially of skin diseases. They were the experts. You didn't go to get, get your nose swabbed and get an email a day later or a phone call a day later that says your test was negative. Another source of prayer. Thank God. You didn't do that. You went to the priests. And it says, show yourself a priest. So they examine, they look for any signs of leprosy or some of the other surface-borne diseases that they tried to contain within the community. And the priest could say, you are clean. You can rejoin the community after a certain offering and ceremony, a little bit about to do it. You come back to the community, you come back to the temple. You can come back to worship. You can go back with your family, you can be in society. And as they went, they were cleansed. They just disappeared. There's a miracle part showing up. But they still have to go to the priests and be declared clean, okay, and go back to the community. One of them sees that he's healed. Now, this is a foreigner. This is an outsider in a community that was, was hard on outsiders even sometimes in we New Englanders can be. He turns back. And who does he thank first? Did he catch it in the reading? He praises God with a loud voice. So this Samaritan, and by the way, the Samaritans and the Jews fought so hard partly because they were cousins. There's family feud. They only read the first five books of the Bible. They worship on a different mountaintop. But in those first five books, they've got the same Deuteronomy that we heard this morning. So if he was a man of faith, he knew this story. If he wasn't, all the more praise that he knew whom to praise for being healed. He knew it was to God. But then he came to Jesus, and it says he threw himself on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks as well. Subtle acknowledgement there. He knows who the Lord is he knows the Lord's perfect presence. And by the way, when you throw yourself on your face at someone's feet, in Greek, the verb to worship is proskuneo, which means to go to your knees. To fall to your knees is synonymous of worship in, in the language of the day and of that place. And it makes a separate sense. Now, he was a Samaritan. He was from away, as they say in he wasn't one of us. Jesus, okay, on the real rhetorical question, we're not ten cleansed, we're ever not. Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this one? We know how Jesus treats foreigners. He used the word. We know how he treated Samaritans and others, Romans, throughout the stories. Then he says something that, that on the surface, rise and go your way, your faith has made you well. I love that phrase because, sorry to use this much Greek lesson this morning, but it gives more meaning. 
Because the verb to make well, sozo, sounds funny, though, from which we get the word savior, soter. Sozo doesn't mean just to heal. When someone says your faith has saved you, he'd have used exactly the same words. So he didn't just say your faith has made you well in the body. Your faith has saved you. Your faith has restored you to a relationship to God. Now here's somebody who's from away. He's not part of God's chosen people. Worse, he's a heretic as he believes part of it. They don't get along. And Jesus says, your faith has saved you. You're made one of God's children. You are restored to God. What did he have to do to do that? He gave thanks. All he did was say thank you. The magic words. He praised God first, and then he recognized one he had already called Master or Lord. And fell at his feet and said, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And in giving thanks and acknowledging the Lord, acknowledging the giver, in this case of miraculous healing, how many things in our lives do we really not quite explain? Or even if you can and you trace it to the source, it's still God. Part of faith. And for this man, the whole expression of faith that saved him and made him well is giving thanks, is gratitude to God for the life, the blessings, the food, the healing that he received, all these things. An act of faith saved him. The same kind of act of faith is part of our acceptance of saying thank you for our healing, for our salvation. Thanks be to God forever and ever. Amen. Can I get the hymn right this time, Eric? <laughs> this time we're going to sing Nun Danke, Alle Gott, it is German. Uh, verses 1 and 2, we'll stick with the English because it's easier. Please rise. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.